Hello class of 2200 and SUBA. My name is Michael Manino. I'm doing my presentation on some of the disadvantages of international business. And sorry if you get distracted by this lamp I have in the background. Without it, for some reason you can't see the screen, but we're gonna have to go with it. And I don't know if I mentioned, but my name is Michael Menino, and uh, I'm gonna go over some of the uh, the risks of international business. Like the first one we're gonna start off with is importing. Some of the risks with importing um, when you're buying and selling uh, products from other countries, you're using other currencies because uh, not everyone in the world wants U.S. dollars, and we don't want the Chinese yen or anything like that. So importing, uh, when you're importing goods, there's a risk of when you purchase the good to when it comes to the warehouse and you pay them, there could be a price difference, you know, 10, 20, 30% price difference um, with the good, which could ultimately um, just deteriorate your, uh, your, all your uh, income and your, uh, Assets, and I mean, it's it's a mess. Same with exporting, it works for the same ways. Um, in Sweden, very recently, in early 2015, they uh, had their currency, I think it was a Swedish um, dollar, went up 30% overnight, which is uh, a huge difference. Usually the currencies are going up 1% or 2%, kind of like the stock market, very little, um, but went up 30% in one night. And why that's a bad thing, uh, you would think like, hey, uh, my currency went up 30%, that's awesome. But if you are a Swedish uh, watchmaker and um, you are selling the good, uh, let's say it's a $1,000 watch. And by the time it gets here, now it's a $1,300 watch. Uh, I, as a consumer, don't want your watch anymore. I could go to China or wherever to, in, to buy your good so there's no reason for me um, to uh, buy your Swedish watch because it's overpriced. It's 30% overpriced, which is a huge problem because uh, that just seizes all your sales. And now you're sitting duck uh, with all your overhead and no income because your, uh, your uh, currency is overvalued. And, you know, there's, it's the same with paying uh, for uh, foreign employees. If you have a... Um, uh, a factory out in China and you pay them uh, their currency and we have our currency their currency could go up you know 10 to, uh, 20 percent or ours could decrease 10 20 percent and that's a huge difference by the time the product gets here and it goes to sales uh, you got to pay them they want to get paid every Friday um, that could do the same thing as importing exporting uh, if your currency or their currency increases um, either way, more than, you know, a couple percent, that can uh, de deteriorate a business. It can deteriorate all your sales, your revenue, it can seize businesses. It can make you, go out, out of bus make you go out of business. So here's actually a graph. I don't know if you can see it, but it's um, in February 28, um, 2011. This was the uh, national disaster of Japan. Um, you know, their currency, the yen, was at $82.00. Just right before the crash, or right before the um, <clears throat> right before the uh, natural disaster, and then March fifteenth, the day of their yen uh, went down to seventy nine dollars, so three dollars difference. And then by April fifteenth, so a month after the disaster, their yen went up to eighty four and a half dollars. Their yen was skyrocketing because they're importing so many goods. Um, they act their government actually had to step in. Because they were importing uh, medical, uh, you know, vaccines, uh, just importing everything. It's such a big import. So now their value was just climbing so fast, their government actually had to step in and subsidize. And so this is what some bit, a small business and medium-sized businesses are doing nowadays. Um, ever since the uh, 2010 crash uh, in Europe, um, people are, businesses are now locking in rates. Um, they're charging customers their own currency. Uh, they're avoiding casino fever, which I'll go over. And uh, they're looking at government actions a lot more closely, which uh, is very big today. So some ways to minimize your risk. Um, 
using a fixed rate in forward contracts. So this is, there's an example with uh, Ford when uh, Ford Motor Company bought Jaguar. Um, they actually had a fixed dollar amount. Um, they used a certain day's uh, currency for the euro to the dollar. So we're going to use this because it could fluctuate. So then uh, when they actually paid them three months later, uh, they actually would have been better off not fixing it. But the reason they did that, so they knew exactly what dollar amount they were paying, because actually the American dollar went higher or it increased from them. So if they would have paid them at the time of the sale, they would have uh, paid less. But that's why people do it to minimize risk. Uh, so if you know the Swedish uh, dollar goes up 30%, they can avoid um, they can avoid those uh, those tragedies. And this is uh, charging customers their own currency. <clears throat> With the power of technology today, you know it's 2015. How I'm doing a presentation right now. Um, you know, there's PayPal, so many things where you can just go online and buy things. Um, with and you know the your chase visa or mastercard will do the currency exchange for you um so instead of instead of having to uh exchange the dollar to the yen you're just purchasing it and uh, you know visa mastercard will do that process for you you know with technology people are doing that a lot more and avoiding casino fever um is just the opposite of fixed rates this is uh i guess hedging or betting against the market thinking that Hey, you know what? Uh, we're buying these pair of boots for a hundred yen uh, today, but guess what? We're not going to pay them for a month because I feel that the American dollars could be worth more. So now we're only paying paying them ninety five uh, dollars instead of the hundred dollars. Um, you know, it's better just to do the fixed rate so all parties are aware of the um, the ex currency exchange that's coming in and out, and they know the dollar amount that's coming in and out. And monitoring government actions. I have the uh, <laughs> Greece flag up here right now. And, you know, it's very, today, um, it's very um, exciting to watch what's going to happen with uh, Greece uh, and Spain and the, the impact they have on the euro. Are they going to get kicked out? I mean, with their bankruptcy, their impact on the euro is a huge impact. I mean, other countries might, you know, want to get out of the euro whatever i mean it's very interesting to see what's going to happen but monitoring government actions is a very big thing right now that might have not have been a couple of years ago but um now that you know countries are coming together they're sharing one currency uh we got to watch what happens what how countries perform and maybe we don't want the euro dollar right now because what greece is doing to it it might not be beneficial we might be you know we might uh be hedging or thinking that you know the American dollar is going to be stronger in the long run because Greece and Spain might tank it because of their they can't pay their debts. So. I think yep yeah, that is it. Uh, my name is Michael Menino. This is the presentation um, of some of the disadvantages of international business and um, and the uh, currency exchange exchange rate. Thank you.